For today's read aloud, we will be reading, Do You Really Want to Visit a Wetland? So before we begin reading, I would like for you to take a moment and really look at this cover and think about the title, Do You Really Want to Visit a Wetland? to make a prediction. All right, if you need more time, just go ahead and pause the video. But today we were focusing on text organization description. So remember what I told you, whenever um, you have a story, it's organized a certain way. Maybe it's with chronological order, or maybe they're focusing, the author is focusing on description. Remember, remember we learned authors use description to tell details about what something is like. So think of... Um, the, what it sounds like, what it looks like, um, what it feels like. Think of the senses, our five senses. Think of hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touch, okay? So think of your senses. Um, this book is a great example of description. As we're reading this story, I'm going to ask you here and there to think about what do you, what do you see? What do you think that might feel like? What do you think that might sound like, okay? So um, let's go ahead and get started on our reading. Do you really want to visit a wetland? A visit to a wetland would help you ace your school report. Do you really want to go? It will be very wet. But wetlands are also full of interesting animals and only some of them will want to eat you. <gasps> what is he looking at a picture of? It says Alice. Here's a picture. He's writing something down. It's an alligator. Do you really think the boy is going to visit a wetland? Thumbs up for yes. Thumbs down for no. If you have your thumbs up for yes, I would like for you to take a moment and think of why you think that. All right, let's keep reading. Be prepared for water everywhere. You'll need hip waders. And don't bring a regular boat. You'll need an airboat with a big propeller above water so it doesn't get stuck in the muck. So here's the boat with the big propeller. Here's his hip waders. So if he gets into the water, um, his clothes won't get wet. Don't forget the bug spray and sunscreen. Ready? Now you're off to explore the swamps, marshes, and sloughs of the Florida Everglade. Um, what would you like to see if you visit a wetland? What would, what would you like to see? Give you a moment to think about it. All right, let's keep reading and see if maybe um, we um, read about something you wanted to see. Start, start at the Shark River Slow. It looks like a big, still marsh, but the water moves through here like a slow river. We're on this page now. Don't worry, the bull sharks that the slow is named after lift farther downstream. You might see rats or snakes. Uh-oh, your boat is stuck. Why do you think his boat is stuck? Do you, do you see the mud? Remember, this boat moves through the water, right? Well, is it going to move on mud? Let's see what happens. Time to get out and push. And put on those waders. Don't touch the sawgrass. It is as sharp as a saw. It rots and forms the muck you're stuck in. Do you see his hip waders? Oh my. What else? Oh, what is that? Is that a snake? There's a fish and a turtle. And um, the grass is sharp, so he's not supposed to touch it. Too bad you can't glide across the water like that water moccasin. This is a water moccasin. It's a type of snake, which is highly poisonous. Lucky for you, the snake finds a frog for lunch. And finally, your boat breaks free. Now you can, you can continue your tour. People have drained half the Everglades to build houses and farms. Animals like the apple snail have lost some habitat. Remember when we did animal research, we learned habitat is where um, an animal or, you know, creature, insect, they live, okay? This affects the food chain. 
birds, turtles, and alligators need the apple snail for food. So since the apple snail had to relocate um, because it lost its habitat where it lives, this affects the food chain because what depends on the apple snail as food? Birds, turtles, and alligators. Get out of the way. Luckily, rainfall still feeds much of the wetlands. Clouds are rolling in right now. The Everglades are surrounded on three sides by water. That creates 55 inches of rain per year. That is a lot. That's a lot of rain. And when it rains, the water rises. Head west to the Big Cypress Swamp. That's where he's going. See the rain coming down? The trees overhead make it dark and a little eerie. What's that sound? <gasps> what sound do you think he's hearing? Quark, 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 quark. <laughs> quark, quark, quark. Oh, cute. It's a nest of alligators and they're hatching. <gasps> Somebody else thinks they're cute too. Do you think he really means, oh, that's cute? Or is he being, um... He's kind of being like sarcastic. He's thinking like, oh, that's not really cute. That's kind of scary. There's alligators hatching, which means their mom is going to be coming soon. So I don't think he really means it's cute. Okay. This next page. You're going to really have to look at the picture. There's something there. What is that? Their mother. Alligators are good mamas. That's bad for you. Quick, paddle away. So why is it bad for people that alligators are good mamas? Well, they're going to be protective of their babies, aren't they? And they're not going to want anyone near them. Okay. Head south toward the Gulf of Mexico. Here, the water mixes with the ocean and gets salt here. So I would like for you to think of salt. What does salt taste like? Okay. Use your description. Use, think back to a time where you may have had salt in food. And like, I would like for you to take a moment and think of that. When you thought of something, give me a thumbs up. All right, remember, we're focusing on description. This is a saltwater swamp. You can see the roots of the mangrove trees that grow here. And if you're lucky, you'll see an American crocodile. Crocodiles prefer saltwater to freshwater. They are more rare than alligators and very shy. The Everglades is the only place on Earth where alligators and crocodiles coexist. So that means that alligators and crocodiles they can be in the same place it's the only place in the world other places no it's just alligators or it's just crocodiles it's not both the everglades is a fragile ecosystem if we don't take care of it we'll lose it nobody wants that right right manatee this is a manatee whoa a manatee a rare sight indeed now you can go home and ace your report All right here here he is re um, doing his report. The Everglades are awesome. All right. So if you were doing a report over the Everglades, what is something you would write about? I'll give you a moment to think about it. All right. Last page. Wetlands of the world. So right here it's light green, that's land, where it's light blue, or the blue is water, and then the darker green is wetlands. So right here, right here is where the story is taking um, place in Florida. See all that? Okay, save the wetlands. Wetlands such as the Everglades are drained to supply water to people living nearby. No matter where you live, fresh water is a limited resource and should not be wasted to conserve water. So what can you do to help? Turn off the water when you're not using it. Take short showers. All right, and so that's, those are, those are two things I think we can really help with. So right here's a glossary. Um, a glossary is a text feature. It let, there's some words in the story um, that we came across that you may or may not have known. For example, ecosystem. Ecosystem is a community of animals and plants interacting with each other and their environment, okay? So um, I hope you enjoyed today's story. Do you really want to visit a wetland? I think it's a really fun story. 
t um, talking about text organization and description. There's so much um, in this book. You can think of um, the different things like, okay, an alligator. What does an alligator look like? What are the sounds that a baby um, alligator makes when they are hatching? So just a whole bunch of description in this book that's really fun and is what we're focusing on. But, but also we're focusing on narrative nonfiction, right? Was this a narrative nonfiction? Thumbs up or down? This was an era nonfiction. We learned real information about the wetlands. That was our topic, the wetlands. We learned real information, but the story, even though we're learning real information, it was told in a story-like way, right? You're learning real things, but it was done in a story-like way. So I hope you enjoyed today's little read aloud.